If you enjoy Draw and Paint with Jury Gray on YouTube and would like to show your support, you can find Cash App and Venmo information below. By all means, this channel is free to watch and learn from. Enjoy! Hey you guys, welcome to another demo or tutorial if you want to say that. Um, this demo is for my watercolor students. So my watercolor students are in the process of painting in color. So um, we've already started the process in class, but I wanted to do or at least talk about the three different methods that I know when it comes to watercolor painting. So um, in this video, I'm going to demo a very, very, very simple object, a simple geometric object. Um, that way it's just a lot quicker and faster for me to get these three paintings down um but what i am going to do is i'm taking the terms or the vocab from possibly you may hear these terms um in the oil painting or acrylics but when it comes to watercolor it's still painting and we can apply these methods to watercolor so first the methods are one a traditional method of painting and watercolors two a direct method of painting and watercolors and three an indirect method of painting and watercolors so um this video may go in that order or it may not but i'm gonna do my best in the editing phase to label what i possibly can label so um when it comes to uh this method if you think about the traditional method of painting and watercolors is pretty much um you are it's a layering method you're starting with your lighter color in our value and you're layering to your darker colors in our values um color and values is, is literally the same thing but sometimes uh you may hear or you may hear Oh, this color needs to be a value darker so on and so forth so just kind of keep that in mind so traditional is really just painting from light to dark um, that's a traditional method um, when it comes to our indirect method which is a method that I definitely and absolutely love is you're starting with your values so you're starting with a underpainting uh, so for me i tend to start with a blue underpainting because i know that that at least established not only my values but it established the temperature of my lighting i tend to paint under warm light more than anything uh, so that method is you will paint an underpainting separating your light part and dark part and then you'll glaze uh colors over that um, so you're still layering i mean watercolors in, in general is a layering method but you're still layering but at least you have an underpainting that you can work on top of uh next um is a direct direct to painting method with watercolors and basically that method is you're going in with all of your colors and values that you see in your dark mass and then you're also going in with all of your colors and values that you're seeing in your light mass and you're applying it directly so it's kind of a la prima you make it more of a and if you're like what is a la prima <laughs> so a la prima is just a painting all in, done in all in one day so um you make it a more wet into width kind of uh look to your painting if you apply that method to your watercolor painting so i wanted to kind of go over that um just to kind of help with just is just explaining what those are so in class i will lecture uh these three different methods so my students will have a clear understanding of it i just wanted to brief it in this video so I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm going to try my best to get through this intro as quick as I can. I'm already four minutes in. So I do want to talk a little bit about my materials. So um, if you've been in my class, you know that um, I like to draw 
my do whatever i'm drawing ahead of time for my watercolor paintings i like to do it ahead of time so i'm gonna do my best to insert the actual drawing because you could tell i've done my transfer already um so uh if you're in any of my classes you know that watercolor paper does not like to be agitated so for me i prefer to draw my image on a sketch sheet of paper and then just transfer it over to my watercolor paper so i'm using a very elementary method if you've watched my channel or if you're in my class you know what this method is so i'm just putting um, graphite on the back of my drawing i take um a ballpoint pen and I transfer it to my watercolor paper. Um, so I went in a little bit darker just so for um, my students to see the drawing or at least the camera. <laughs> at least the camera can see the drawing because sometimes it doesn't even show up. So I typically would like this drawing to be more of a ghost and less of the graphite showing. But I mean, it is what it is. I can't do nothing about it. So that's um my method of transferring um that way if you are aware of that you have an idea of how i got my drawing down because i'm doing three quick paintings or demos and really not paintings um i just wanted something quick because i knew i had to transfer this over three times uh so i did use multiple colors of ballpoint pens uh so i once again you guys already know i like to pre-mix so this really isn't a pre-mix it's more so just getting a lot of paint in my wells and then these are colors that i i know i'm probably going to use or mix together so i do have a um a tray that's empty if i need to mix uh so that's there and that's near me i do have my water i have um i have multiple cups of waters because i don't want to have to get up and change out anything while i'm painting so i think i have four cups of waters that are near me i do want to talk a little bit about my colors i do know that and i'm just going to place this here I do know that um, some of my students are are taking an actual watercolor class with me and some of my past students are still using my um, channel to just help grow, you know, their own skills or get better at their craft. Um, so just in case you're just following along with the video at home, um, this it, these are the colors that I am using um, for my watercolor students in my class. I'm so sorry. I am not using Winsor Newton. <laughs> I am using my St. Peter's palette um it was just the first thing that i grabbed when i was in my studio and yes i should probably be using the materials that we're supposed to use but i just fyi i just want you guys to know that um so i am using cat cadmium lemon yellow green emerald green uh russian green as well as i think this is cad orange but my palette is a little unorganized right now so um it's either raw sienna or, or um cat orange raw sienna is a little bit more brown so i don't think it's that but it's possibly cat orange and then also matter lake um so these are the colors that i'm using this is actually although i didn't label it i believe it's sepia um i mixed this with a little bit of blue because i wanted a cool cash chat shadow so in my paintings i'm not going to go into um too much depth in my cast shadows because i it, it's it's something i'm not okay i'm not saying it's not important it's very important you should really 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 um focus in on your cast shadow and get all of the different values that you're seeing in your cast shadow because this is a demo this video is not is not um meant to meant for me to have this masterful end product is really about the process that's really all it is and that's how i'm treating it um so that's why i'm not going to work too much in my cat shadow because i really don't need to so that's there so i would suggest if you want to elicit those colors just take a screenshot of the screen um that way it is there i am using my mimic paintbrushes uh I do have a um, eyedropper for more water to be to dilute my paint, uh, and and I'm using my Saint Peter Petersburg um, palette. I think that's everything that I use. My pencils. I ended up using um, 
a mechanical pencil which is the hb and then for transferring i used it, my elf pencil uh so that was really it when it comes to the graphite side and i believe that's it so um now uh, my intro is already nine minutes but now that i got all of that done um in the next clip i'm going to start the demo so like i said i'm going to do my best to insert um what i'm painting and I'm doing my best to insert my previous drawing so you guys have an idea of what the drawing looked like and how far I got with that. Um, and then I'm going to do my best to label uh, each method so you know what the method is. I may or may not add um, the definition because I do know uh, you guys can Google the definition, but my students at uh, in the class um, possibly um, I would definitely do that in the lecture. So enough of me talking. I'm going to get quiet. You guys are probably going to be cut to a new clip. Um, and I'm going to start the painting process. I may do a voiceover. I do not know for sure at this moment, but I probably will. Um, and if not, just know that we're really just watching the process. So um, I'll see you guys in the next clip. Hey everyone, so I'm coming in with a very quick voice over. So I just want to talk just a little bit about um, this process, which is the traditional method. So the traditional method is once again, it is light values to start with and you move into your dark values as you layer. And when I mean values, values in color. Um, so your lighter color um, and as you get darker, that's when you start to darken your um, darker colors and add that as you start to layer. So that's more of the traditional method. Um, so you see that I am starting with yellow and then I'm going to um, glaze a second layer over it that is going to be the local color of the cylinder, which is a, a green, kind of a yellow green color. And then from there, I move into some cooler uh, greens and that's just mainly for my shadow mask of the cylinder. Um, and then I start to kind of push and pull my light logic principles from there to the best of my ability. Um, we are dealing with watercolors, so sometimes I can nail it, sometimes I can't nail it because you know things are blending together. And sometimes you may want that um, when it comes to all of the layering. Um, but enjoy the process. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next clip. <laughs>
Hey everyone, so I'm coming in with another voiceover for our next painting. So this painting it is the indirect method. So the indirect method is I'm actually starting with an underpainting. Once again, my underpainting is blue and it's mainly blue because of the temperature of my light. My light is typically a warm light, so that means that your shadows are going to be cool. So I start with a um, blue underpainting and I'm just blocking out my light mask as well as my shadow mask so I'm really just blocking out my shadow mask and leaving the white of the paper um, for my light mask so once I have all of that blocked out then I go in with the local color of the object and I pretty much just glaze that local color over my cylinder I do make sure that I leave my um, highlight um, if you need to use masking fluid I meant to say this on the last clip but if you need to use masking fluid for your highlight definitely do that I didn't do it I'm trying to train myself to be more um, mindful of where my highlight is and not to paint into it to the best of my ability and so um, once I'm done with the glaze I, let, I allow it to dry and then I start to go back over um, and start to apply my light lights and principles over the actual painting um, so it's more layering and more glazing uh, for that and once again um, not all the time but majority of the time I do my best to nail all of my light logic principles and if you are a student and you're like girl what is a light logic principle um, my students in my class actually do know but if you're watching this and you don't know light logic principles is your highlight your mid-tones um, your shadow edge or terminator or bed bug line <laughs> which is um, the line that separates your light mass from your dark mass of your object and then you have your core and then you have your reflected light you have a pit or it can be occlusion shadow or trap shadow um, in your cast shadow and then um, from there uh, pretty much your cast shadow has many different values in it as well so um, I do my best and like I said we're dealing with watercolors because sometimes you nail it sometimes you don't and this is a demo so <laughs> I didn't really have a whole lot of time to spend on these paintings but I got as much as I could get done but enjoy the painting I'll see you guys in the next clip
Hey everyone, so I'm in with a uh, third voiceover. So in this clip, we are gonna watch the direct method. So the direct method of this actual painting is just that um, you are applying your colors and your values directly. So a little backstory on this painting, and you guys will see this. I wanted to play with a little bit of my pink strokes and I realized and I noticed that um, I probably need to practice that a little bit more. <laughs> so going into this painting, I think it started really great with my pink strokes, but because I did not commit to um, my colors and my values in certain areas, um, I ended up just... Um, just throwing away the whole idea of leaving my brush stroke so it's still a direct method it's just that um, I didn't use my brush strokes to help me with that process um, so once again with this method you're not coming in with any type of undertone or under painting you're just directly painting your your um, light latcher principles and your colors um, it's a faster method um, for me it's very fast if I can nail my paint strokes but um, another thing you guys when it comes to this actual demo um, I think it's a great teaching moment and the reason why I say it's a great teaching moment is because sometimes when you are a young artist uh, you tend to if something is going wrong in a painting uh, young artists tend to just discard it and they just like all right you know what that that started going south um, I'm just gonna redo it so I think it was a great uh, teaching moment because I didn't abandon my painting although I know it was starting to go south I actually um, decided to um, problem solve and really work myself through the process yes the painting at the end did not come out in my opinion as um, as bright and intense in color as I would like it to uh, but I didn't abandon the painting so it's, I think it's a good process to see uh, in this painting but once again, this is a direct me method. It is the right method. Uh, I think it would have made a little bit more sense if I would have stayed true to my brush strokes. But enjoy the painting. <laughs>